Well, I guess you're here too now. Uh, yeah, no, I think I practically live here yeah. now, you know, can't escape. But, but. exciting, yes. this is an, a fun one. It's, it's been a long time in the works. For those who don't know, we were meant to film this like last week and then it was raining. So mm. it's now been what, like two weeks since we've both seen it? Yes, I mean, <laughs> I think maybe I need to go quickly watch the movie again and okay. then come back Okay. and then, you know, we'll be able to talk about it. All right, well, yeah. we don't have time for that. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. All right, damn it. Okay. <laughs> All right, but what are we here? What are we here to talk about, Rob? We are here to talk about Bullet Train. Bullet Train. Yes. All right, well, let's, let's go on to our one word reviews then. Mm -hmm. All right, um, did we want to switch cameras? Oh. Uh, yeah, we're already there, are we? Okay. Yeah, well, spoiler don't... alert then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one word review for mm -hmm. Bullet Train. Mm -hmm. By now, people should know, you know, what we're doing. We don't need an intro every bloody time. It's a review. It's not that complex. No. So, Rob, your one word review for Bullet Train is toilet. Lovely. Yeah. Have you been to one recently? <laughs> Uh, no, it's probably why I'm in such a foul mood. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You need to start becoming happier in these videos. I, prob I, I probably should. Next one. We'll okay, yeah. next. We'll um, yeah, we'll see. But yeah. um, okay, my one word review is polyjuice mm. with a potion. To tie into Harry Potter. That's what the Good job. Is. Yeah. 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 No, there's yeah. nothing no. else that it relates to, okay. but I'm, it works on multiple levels. I'm trying to remember the movie. It might as well be a tie into Harry Potter. <laughs> it's actually a Harry Potter movie. It's Harry Potter and the Bullet Train. They go to Japan. That makes so much sense now. Oh, I'd love to see Japanese wizards. That would be cool. That'd be sick. That'd be they probably cool. have like really like colorful spells and Shit. Samurai sword magic. Oh my god! That would be amazing. That'd be awesome. Okay, this is now a fan <laughs> review for a movie Harry that Potter and the it. Bullet Train. That'd be so cool. Why did we go to America for Fantastic? All right, this is what we do. Fantastic Beast, get rid of it. It's fine. Now let's go back to like samurai era, like ancient Japan yes. with like emperors and you know all that sort of stuff going on. Uh, that would be right. Then we have the yeah, wizard I'd school. I'd watch that. Okay, I'd really watch that. There you go. And then we can throw a predator in there yeah. as well. Pat and Pen. And, and oh, then no, predator can no, fight the magic no. samurai. No, is, wait, is Predator owned by WB? I, I no uh, Fox, which is I guess now Disney. Disney, of course, it was on Disney yeah. Plus. Okay. And Prey was very good, by the way. Go watch yeah. Prey. Yeah. Yeah. I've also seen it, so you can't give me shit about it, like with Top Gun, which actually, you did in you... two different movies. Did you actually like Prey? I yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I liked Prey. Oh, good. Yeah, I told you, because I was literally talking to you about it the other day, because mm. it, it um, stars the chick who was in Legion. That's right. And yes. the whole time I was like, yes. why do I recognize her? And she's yes. one of the characters in Legion. Mm. Bullet that was, train. That was a tangent. That a was half. a tangent. All right, yeah. so let's get into it. You get to go first because I want to know what you thought first. Did you like it? Um, yes, I did. I did like Bullet Train, and I actually liked it a lot more than I was expecting to because I usually have a rule where I don't want to know what the reviews of the film are or how it's being received <laughs> before always, going into a I movie. Always fuck with that <laughs> yes yes uh, but it wasn't you who fucked with it this okay. time i was literally like you know on my way to see the movie mm -hmm. when i called a friend who shall remain nameless and um you know who you are you know who you are and i i called them and i was like i'm on my way to see bullet train and they were like oh i saw on rotten tomatoes it has like a 53 percent and i was obviously livid because i was like 10 minutes away from watching the movie <laughs> You're like i guess i can't yeah, yeah and i was i was i was Pretty, I was pretty mad. Yeah. I was pretty mad. So I was kind of expecting to be like, okay, all right, let's see where we go. But I came out actually thinking it was quite a lot of fun. Yes. I, I enjoyed right. it tremendously for about 75 to 80% oh, of it. Oh no. <laughs> um, no, no, but I still, I still like it. I, okay. I still think it was a, it was a definite we'll have to good get time. to get into that 25% Yes. Then. Yeah, I also didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. I had so much fun with it. You know, there were definitely moments where I was like, oh, this is going to be epic. And then it was, I think mm -hmm. the performances were great. Mm -hmm. I think that the action was great. I think that there were so many cool, like little fun cameos and surprises and stuff where I was like, ah, Ryan Reynolds. I yeah, was like, yeah. I remember everyone, like I, I went with a couple of friends and we were all like, of course it's Ryan Reynolds. Sometimes I just want to go to the movies and have a really fun time and it not be a piece of shit, stupid fucking movie like the fin like the Fast and the Furious or the Transformers movies. Because that is always the argument those people give where it's like, oh, don't you just go to the movies to have fun? No, not if it's a bad movie. 
Because it a good like fun action or whatever does not a good movie or enjoyable movie make. This is a good example of a fun movie doesn't take itself seriously, has a lot of really cool moments, but isn't it like it's not going to be Oscar winning? You know what I mean? Like it's not going to be that the next prestige movie. It is just good, not very clean fun. On the casting though, yeah. we need to address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room being the reason why maybe it's not getting as well reviewed as, yes. we, as we feel. Yes. Um, there's been a lot of controversy around ac accusations of whitewashing with the cast members. Really? Yes. So oh, okay. Could, I didn't know about this. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was reading about it. And the thing is, is that there's a lot of people who, you know, fans of the book, and I've never read the book, yeah. who are claiming that, you know, this film is, uh, is um, you know, a huge example of Hollywood whitewashing because it's set in Japan, Japan. and there's all these like you know Caucasian characters mm -hmm. filling out the main cast, and you just have the Japanese characters kind of more in the supporting roles. Um, and a lot of people are sort of claiming, well, you know, Brad Pitt's character in the book is Japanese, Joey oh. King is Japanese, Michael Shannon's Japanese. All these characters oh, then are actually he's Japanese. Not Russian? Well, see, that's that's the thing. A lot of people are saying that they've they've whitewashed Changed the it. characters. However, I think I cr I might have to with editing find this, but I think I saw a quote from the author of the book mm. who actually defended the film right. and said, "I never said what race the characters were in the book." Mm. So there's a little bit of like a kind of well, is this whitewashing? Because they also Isn't go it? by code names, yeah. So yeah. you would never know. Very interesting. Yeah, and yeah. he likes the film apparently. The oh, author, well, yeah. The I mean, if the author likes the film, and if he said that, and like mm -hmm. you know, editing Rob will be able to. I'll, I'll affirm clarify that. that. And yeah. again, this is like one of the few times when I haven't read the book, so I don't actually have the context. Mm. I didn't like. I didn't realize until afterwards. Which again, I'll be interested potentially to read it because I don't. It'll be very interesting to see how it translates because mm. it feels like such a visual film in yeah. the way it was done. I didn't know it was a book until the credits rolled, and I was thinking, like, what a great original script. Oh, that's how I kind of, <laughs> that's kind of how but I you felt. know what? That yeah. aside, I love that that was adapted because mm. this is something like, I mean, yes, there are definitely elements that we recognize, like we've already talked about, but. There is so much originality there. And it's, mm. it's so much fun to just watch something that isn't tied to... And as, again, as much as someone who loves franchises and you know continued stories, mm. it is fun to watch something different and new and told in a way that... In a, in a different way. On that note, though, mm. it's like I think this is another element where the film played a dangerous game and actually ended up winning. Yeah. Because... I personally, for me, I think if if a if a film is going to be dealing with ideas of fate or mm. luck or chance, yeah. it's always like, oh dear, man! Like you might, it, it it feels like you might just be writing yourself a blank check, check to, to do whatever you to want, to do whatever you want, and yeah. not have to worry about you know convenient plot. Because it's like it's luck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was sitting there being like, oh no! But the film actually, for the most part addressed those ideas in a way that did feel natural and yeah. didn't break the emotion of the I think it film. set clear rules behind yeah. certain characters. Yes. So, you know, there was the whole idea of, like, he has bad luck. And then later on, Joey King's whole idea or, or she the, has very the prince's good luck. idea is that she has very good but luck. But the irony, then, this is why it worked for me, the irony of that is that when you look at those two characters, I sort of think, is there some other layer happening there where she keeps talking about how much good luck she has and Brad Pitt That keeps idea of, like, about, manifesting. Yeah, like, Brad Pitt but keeps it's talking about how much bad, bad luck. luck. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah. is that looking through the film he has the fucking best luck that's what I'm saying yeah, yeah it's yeah. like actually you actually have a lot of goddamn luck like yeah. there are many times you should have died yeah and Joey King ultimately I think has very bad luck <laughs> yeah exactly you know? so that's what I think is interesting it's like oh was that intentional and I'm gonna say well I yes. think it yeah and I think <laughs> yeah. it ultimately also comes down to the idea which is ultimately like what Hiroyuki Samada's whole character says is that it's not about bad luck or good luck it is about fate mm. and it is about karma mm. and it is about what you write for yourself Yep. And so that is just what like the energies create ultimately. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, the, obviously, as you can tell, there's like a lot of, you know, motivations and mm. agendas and players throughout this, you know, mm -hmm. story. And, uh, you know, that's obviously part of the fun, seeing yes. how everybody's, you know, plots and plans and schemes are all interconnecting. And, and all going to and shit. And all going to <laughs> shit. Again, why I compare it to that crime yeah, era from yeah. the 90s. I think it did a very good job of like, you know, making sure that we were following all the agendas and all the double crosses. 
right up until it was all starting to get revealed at the end. This, okay. this is where one, I, I, it didn't ruin the movie for me at all, okay. but if I'm going to be really nitpicky, because I was having a great time, yeah. but if I'm really nitpicky, I think that I, I'm not 100% certain, and you maybe can clarify for this for me, I'm not 100% certain that once all of the cards were laid on the table, mm, they made sense. That all of the agendas and the double crosses okay. all made sense, well, considering that it was all orchestrated by like the same guy. And yeah. I was look, looking at it, being like, "Well, if you wanted to achieve that, couldn't you have just done that instead yeah. of this huge?" Well, let's quickly before we get into that, let's quickly recap. We're going to have the names and then motivations. So okay. got, all right, let's start at the top. All so right. we got Ladybug, mm. um, Brad Pitt. He just, it's his job, clean and simple, wants it to be simple. He wasn't to, supposed to be there, he was called in because was the called in because was Ryan sick. Reynolds, yeah. yeah, was sick. Okay. And he was the actual person who was meant to be doing it. Then we've got Lemon and Tangerine, easy job for a big guy, big payout, get the sun and the case home. Then we've got Joey King, the prince, her whole thing, she just wants to kill the white death. Yeah. You don't know why, turns out it's to prove herself. Okay. Because she's the daughter. <laughs> yep. Um, then later on, we've got Logan Lerman's character. He's just the son. He doesn't really have a motivation. His whole motivation He's is just to strange die. from the white death for yeah. reasons which then, I can't remember. Yes. Then we've got uh, the guy, the Mexican cartel guy. We'll put the right name up. His whole thing is to kill the Hornet, who, who is the assassin killed who killed his wedding. wife and everyone he knows. Yes. <laughs> and um, we'll get. I want to get into his story as well because I loved his whole intro. Mm. Um, then we've got the Hornet, who is Zazie Beats, and her whole thing is just classic. You know. Kill, kill the sun, get the money. Get the money, the ransom money that Lemon and Tangerine were protecting. also protecting. But no, we haven't finished. Okay. <laughs> We've got the the uh, father whose son is currently in hospital because he got pushed off a building. And then he wants to have revenge on Joey King, who pushed him, the son off the building. Mm. And then we've got the grandfather, Hiroyuki Samada, who was once upon a time part of a crime organization and now is just a grandfather whose you know, gra uh, grandson was almost killed but wasn't and now is laying in wait for his revenge against the White Death. And the White Death is like manipulating him behind at least four of these all, motivations. Yeah, and we don't know that until the end and because ultimately all we know is that he's the most powerful mm crime boss, yes. Russian crime boss of all time, played by Michael Shannon. That is everyone. That is everyone. Okay. And I'm not certain that like when, <sighs> you, when you actually lay it all out and see that the White Death was like manipulating all of that, I'm like thinking, well, White Death, for what you wanted to achieve. So essentially what the White Death is doing is he's just getting all these people in a room to try and wipe each other out on this train. It's just all, I think it's like he's trying to basically take care of everything so that he is in control. It's all the it's like niggly his wife bits. died or something. So basically, yeah, yeah, his wife was killed by Ryan Reynolds' character. Which is why he wanted Ryan Reynolds there and he, Ryan Reynolds was supposed to be on the job but Brad Pitt was called in because Ryan Reynolds was six. He so got a stomach bug. So, so yes, so... Because his character is notoriously lucky, the Ryan Reynolds one. Correct, so... Yeah. Except he killed the plan the didn't wife. work out because one person who was supposed to be there didn't end up being there yes. and Brad Pitt being weirdly lucky. Unlucky <laughs> lucky. Unlucky lucky. Yeah, because ultimately the, yeah. his motivations are he wants to get rid of... So he wants to get rid of um, the guy who killed his wife, who he thinks is Brad Pitt, but it's not. Then he also wants to get rid of his son because his son is just... His son is also, he blames... It all comes down to the fact these are all the people he blames He wanted to get for, his son on the train. Well, these are all the people that he blames for the death of his wife. Yep. So he wants to kill uh, who he thinks is Brad Pitt, but is actually Ryan Reynolds because he's the one who killed his wife because it was an accident. And then Logan Lerman, he blames his son because he's a no good, like good for nothing, who... His his wife was on the way to save from one of the yep. many things that he fucked up. And, and then um, Lemon and Tangerine, he wants to kill them because he was called away to clean up something that they ultimately caused. They killed caused. like 17 they people or something. killed a bunch something. of people in Bolivia and then ultimately that's the reason Brad he Pitt couldn't was be there. there. For some reason. Brad Pitt was also there, but he blames them because it's like if he had been there, his wife wouldn't have been there. But he okay. was called away on business. Right. Uh, and that's it. That is the motivation. So he wants to kill them. And then everyone else kind of came as part of that. Oh, and the Hornet he wanted to kill because... I don't remember that one. After all that... <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, look, that, that's, that's exactly my point. Yeah. Is that the... the it's, it's very convoluted. Incredibly so. And I kind of... I give it a pass because I think the, the self-aware dark comedy of the story it's almost leaning into yeah it's so insane but you do follow it yeah you f you follow it but when when I'm, I'm like i'm having a great time but by the time it ends i was like how the fuck did that all fit together and i think <laughs> the movie 
knows that it's absurd. Yeah. I hope it will be a film that will be appreciated with time because mm. clearly I think we like it more than most people. Yeah, but I just I and I don't I I get because we we're talking about the whole like potential whitewashing that sort of thing and I get that, but really I don't really get why it's so low. Like it I just had I had so much you know, fun. We've never done this in one of our reviews, but let let's let's actually see what it says on Rotten Tomatoes. All right, about I'll pull movie. up Metacritic and IMDb yep. then. Yep, okay. Stand by. This so, is extremely entertaining while we're all we're both on yep. our phones. Okay. So uh, on the on the Rotten Tomatoes, it has a fifty three percent. Okay. For from two hundred and ninety eight reviews, uh, average out of ten of five point six, which is quite low. Mm. Um, and its audience score is a little higher, seventy six percent, with an mm. average of three point nine out of five. Um, and the critics consensus of Bullet Train on Rotten Tomatoes is Bullet Train's colorful cast and high speed action are almost enough to keep things going after the story runs out of track. I mean, yeah. don't know if I agree with that. I don't agree with yeah. that. Yeah, but the audience score says, oh, I don't know if I agree with this either. The audience uh, consensus says, it could have been a more entertaining ride, but if you're in the mood for a decent thriller to pass the time, Bullet Train will get you where you want it. to am go. I, am I crazy? Are we crazy? Maybe. Okay, because I'm DB. Meta score's 49. That's low. That's so low. And right now, there are, like, it's interesting because there are some, there are Chicago Sun Times, Entertainment Weekly, they've got it quite high, like 88, 83, 75. But then AV Club and The Rap have it at like 25 and 30. All Bullet Train had to be was high gloss all star, late summer nonsense, but instead it gives high gloss all star, late summer nonsense a bad name. See, I think I disagree with that entirely because I think it was quite crea- it was nonsense. Yeah. But it was it knew that it was nonsense and it was very creative in projecting that yeah. as we've been discussing. Well the audience score on IMDb is seven point five, which is very good. That's pretty good. And so, I agree with that. I know that we've had a lot of like IMDb is a bit, you know. Yeah. But in this case I agree. I think that that is a perfect score for it. Because like mm. While I don't have necessarily, I know you have nitpicks. I don't really like. I don't care enough about them to actually even consider them They didn't them ruin nitpicks. the movie for me. Yeah, but yeah. like, I know it's not perfect. Like, no. it's not a mo- It's not in my case the everything everywhere all at once. It doesn't beat that for this year or a mm. few movies. But like, it, I just, god damn it, I had so much fun. You know what mm. I mean? Like, and you know what? I also just final note from my end. I love that it actually has an emotional through line. Mm. There are, I care about the characters. I, I care I about them. Ma- so much. When Aaron Taylor, when Tangerine died, mm. that was devastating. I was pretty upset and that's why it was also such a tense scene because yeah. that was like a moment of victory which very quickly became... A moment of tragedy. A moment of not just tragedy oh, but what? also like... Yeah. Um, I'm going to call it satisfying frustration. Yeah. You know, because you're frustrated that it's happened. Yeah. But it's because it's like, oh no! Yeah, you got you were so close to defeating the villain. Oh, I know. You know, I know like, cause jo- and that's what I was saying mm. before. Like, the prince, Joey King's character, is the character you love to hate in the movie because you, mm. you're like, you're such a bitch. Like, mm-hmm. you're like, fuck you. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's very satisfying and cathartic yeah. when she gets run over by, by a truck. By lemon. By lemon, exactly. By lemon driving, driving the truck a truck full of tangerines. tangerines. Yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's a good yeah, movie. It's, it's pretty good. It's good. Yeah, it's should pretty. we move to our final thoughts? Maybe we should. I'll go first because yes, I feel please. like you've gone first the th- last few I times. Have, yes. Now, okay, going through it, we'll put it up on the screen. We know our ratings. Mm-hmm. Now, definitely not on the lower end. Definitely not a socks at Christmas. I, I think it's like, I don't know if it's enough for me to give it a shining treasure. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with it's a solid hot soup. Mm-hmm. It's, it's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it'll hit the right spot when I'm in the mood for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hot soup for me. Uh, yeah, no, I I think uh, don't need to think about this one. It's a hot soup. Don't Look even, at that. Yeah. Oh my god. Done. Look at how nice we are today. Yeah, I know, right? So it's like thick... after a few argumentative ones, this is just yes. nice. Yes, exactly. You know, may- maybe the uh, the career of Clean Slate will continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see because if the next one doesn't go as planned, what's it, the next one? It's the retrospective for The Departed. So that could be the end. I don't know. I haven't, you know, we'll see. We'll see what my thoughts are. I don't know. I'm, I'm putting money down on it right okay. now, but I'm pretty sure you're going to like The Departed. All right. Well, yeah. we'll see. On that note. Goodbye. Thanks for taking a break yep. with Clean Slate. We're still not very good at this. You, are need, we? you need yeah. to say the tagline. Yeah. Yeah.